When it comes to fixing iPhones, a lot of people are intimidated to start iPhones are becoming more and more increasingly difficult to fix, and even if you want to work on your own personal iPhone, some people are really intimidated to even start there. The thought of losing all your data, photo, videos on your iPhone, on your own personal iPhone is a very real reality that could happen within a repair. For that reason, I recommend going online and buying secondhand iPhones as a great entry point for beginners. The benefits of going online and buying iPhones is that you could buy iPhones that are pretty cheap and affordable, and they won't have any data on them that you run the risk of losing. This is really really great because it reduces the stress of needing of doing the repair properly and even if the repair does go badly you're not going to be down that much money. For that reason that's where I recommend to start. That kind of brings the motivation behind this video. Today I'm going to be presenting you my top five picks for iPhones that I think are really really great if you're a beginner and you're looking to fix some sort of iPhone. These are all going to be iPhones that cost under $150 that you can purchase up and some of them are going to be even cheaper than $150. We're talking 50, 30 bucks here. And for that reason, even if you do break something, it's not going to be that much money that you're going to be out of pocket. Anyone can buy some of these affordable iPhones and get started repairing with very very little money. I want to demonstrate that repairing iPhones is not that scary of a process and more people should do it. I feel like it's a really really fun and rewarding and even in some cases you can make some money off of it which I think is really exciting. So I guess that brings us to my list. I'm going to be presenting the pros and cons and I'm going to be starting off with an iPhone 7. The iPhone 7 launched in 2016 and it came in two different varieties. The 7 base and the 7 plus. And I guess we'll start breaking down the pros and the cons. So the pros of an iPhone 7 is that the iPhone 7 launch was probably the last iPhone that was released that had repairability in mind. Apple is going to be locking almost no features behind some sort of software lock. If you guys are really interested, I didn't release a video last week regarding Apple's repairability trap in which you do repair a component, they will lock out some features with your iPhone. And the iPhone 7 is probably one of the last exceptions to that rule, in which I am able to grab a broken iPhone 7. Maybe that iPhone 7 has a shattered screen, a broken camera, and a bad battery, and I'm able to take that iPhone 7 without need for any specialized tools like a programmer. I'm able to just grab up some precision screwdrivers and then go to town and replace all those parts without any issue. For that reason, an iPhone 7 is going to be one of my favorites if you're looking to get into iPhone repairs. With, that, with all those pros, we're going to get into the cons. The iPhone 7 is an old iPhone. It is coming up on being 7 years old, and it is so old that the newest iOS, which is going to be iOS 16, is not supported on the 7. When it comes to reselling that iPhone, you're not going to be able to get much money off of it. You can probably purchase like a broken iPhone 7 for roughly around $40 broken. Throw in around $20 a part, let's say you'd need to replace a broken screen, and then afterwards, that iPhone is only going to be worth $70 still. The profit margins aren't really going to be that, that appealing. And even in some cases, you might be lucky to break even, or you might be losing out on some money. But I still think that the iPhone 7 is going to be one of the best points for entry, because you can buy these things for so cheap, you know? <laughs> like I said, $30, $40 to buy a broken iPhone, and even if you break something on it, let's say you just like stab a screen screwdriver or like you snap a cable off of that iPhone and uh, you are still going to be fine because th that iPhone was only worth $30 to begin with and it's not th going to be that big of a deal if you break it. That brings me to my number fourth pick which is going to be the iPhone 11. So the iPhone 11 launched back in 2019 with three different models. the yeah, 11 base, 11 pro, and 11 pro max. Now I'm going to be focusing on the iPhone 11 base for this video and the reason why is because of the price. Right now you can probably reliably purchase an iPhone 11 that's been broken condition for right around $150 and sometimes even less. And the nice part is once you fix up this iPhone it is going to be worth around $250 to maybe even $300 in some cases. For that reason the profit margins on this phone are going to be very very good. This iPhone is a more modern iPhone and it is quite in demand as well. So I guess this transitions to the cons and due to the fact that one of the pros was that it was a modern iPhone, one of the cons is also going to be it's a modern iPhone in which I'm, I'm talking about there's going to be a lot of features that are locked out with this iPhone 11 in which switching out a screen you're going to be locking out true tone and auto brightness if you don't have a programmer and also Apple is going to throw you a non-genuine parts message if you decide to switch out your screen which is going to hamper down the value on what you can get by reselling the iPhone. Switching out the battery is also going to throw a non-genuine parts message and you're going to 
lose out on the battery health. And that's uh, going to be a major con in my eyes because by switching out and doing a repair on this iPhone, we're going to be locking away some features. And that's kind of what I don't like about the iPhone 11. But given that you do get nice profit margins with this iPhone, even if you can't restore all these features, it could still be pretty lucrative to buy this iPhone broken and repair it. It not having a shattered screen anymore or it not having a bad battery anymore. It might increase the value enough in which you might be able to generate some sort of profit. Now, I've done this in episode 3 on the Flipping for Profit series in which I was able to take an iPhone 11 that had a shattered screen. I was able to put a brand new screen on it for right around under $20, relist it onto Facebook Marketplace, and I was able to make a profit of over $100. And even though it did have a non-genuine parts message, the buyer that I did find didn't really mind it, and they purchased that iPhone from me, and they were a happy customer. And I still say that iPhone going into fixing iPhone 11 is going to be a little tricky, but you can still definitely manage to do the repair. That brings me to my number third pick, which is going to be the iPhone X, or 10. The iPhone X launched in four different models, which is going to be the X, the XR, the XS, and the XS Max. And now all four of these models are, you can buy them for roughly around $100 broken, and you fix them up, and then you can sell them for around $200, $180, give or take iPhone 10 is one of the first iPhones to introduce Face ID, and it is a standard feature across all modern iPhones. Apple decided to replace the home button with a Face ID, and it has mixed feelings. Some people like the Touch ID, and some people like the Face ID, but yeah, it is a modern feature, and it is really nice to work on an iPhone that does have Face ID for such an affordable price. And if you do purchase an iPhone 10, strictly the iPhone 10, not the 10R, not the 10S, not the 10S Max, but the iPhone 10, you do have the benefit of being able able to change out the battery without the iPhone throwing a non-genuine parts message, meaning that if you do decide to do a battery swap for the iPhone 10, you will be able to preserve or fully restore that iPhone battery to how it was from the factory. You get the battery health and you don't get any genuine parts message, and it's really a nice and convenient repair. This kind of brings me to my cons, which is going to be if you do decide to work on an iPhone 10, you have to know that you do lose out on true tone and auto brightness when you decide to go through with a screen repair. The iPhone 10 really suffers from the same exact issue as the iPhone 11 in which you are locked out behind Apple software lock of two different features being auto brightness and true tone. So I guess that brings us to our number two pick which is going to be the iPhone 8. So the iPhone 8 has the benefit of being still on the current iOS, which is iOS 16. Apple miraculously, even though it was released in 2017, it still supports the modern iOS, meaning that it is still considered a modern phone. Obviously, once we update to iOS 17, it's probably going to be left behind. But for now, it is still receiving patch updates and it's still supported by Apple. Also, it being an older iPhone, you're going to have the benefit of being able to do a battery swap like the iPhone 10 in which by doing a battery swap you're not going to be losing out on battery health which is going to be a major advantage when it comes to working on iPhone 8s. With that said the cons once again come into play in which true tone and auto brightness is once again going to be lost with replacing the front screen on that iPhone 8 and you're not really going to be see that, seeing that great of profit margins for iPhone 8 as well if you decide to go through with the repair. For instance, you might be able to purchase an iPhone 8 for around $50, repair it up, throw $20 in parts for it, and then afterwards you go back to relist it or sell it, you're only going to be able to sell it for roughly around $90 to $100, which is not really that great of a profit margin once again, when compared to the 10 and the 11. But the big reason I put it on my number two pick is going to be because of my number one pick, and it's going to be the iPhone Etsy. So the iPhone Etsy and iPhone 8 have a major, major pro that I think is really, really appealing and in which you are able to swap out different components between the two models of iPhones. The iPhone SE did come in three different generations, but I'm going to be talking about the latest two, which is the 2020 model of iPhone SE, which is essentially the body of an iPhone 8 with the components or internals of an iPhone 11, and the iPhone SE 2022, which is the body of an iPhone 8 that came in with the hardware of an iPhone 13. And a lot of buyers that are looking for an affordable, cheap iPhone that doesn't really cost much, it, yes, it might have a bit outdated design, but they're, they're willing to put performance 
it's in front of aesthetics, they'll look, gravitate towards the iPhone SE and buy it. Now, I think the major selling point behind the iPhone SE or why you should work on iPhone SEs is because you can swap components pretty, pretty easily between the 8 SE 2020 and SE 2022, in which you're able to take an iPhone screen from an iPhone 8, move it on to the iPhone 2020 without any problem, or move it on to the 2022 without any problem. And you can also move different other components besides the screen, like for instance, the loudspeaker, the camera, the housing, all these different components you're able to move between an iPhone that was released almost six years ago and an iPhone that was released last year, which is just crazy in my mind. Yet going into the cons, there are going to be some components that you can't really swap between an iPhone 8 and an iPhone SE. An iPhone 8 battery is not compatible with an iPhone SE. And I'll have a link in the description of a full guide that iFixit made between what components are swappable and what components aren't. But for the most part, a lot of the components are going to be swappable. And I guess one last con I want to say about the iPhone SE is that once again, you're going to be suffering from the same exact issue that plagued the previous three iPhones, which is the true tone and auto brightness is going to be locked when you do decide to switch the screen. And you're also going to be losing out on battery health when you decide to switch out the battery. What, with that said, I still think that the iPhone SE, even though it does suffer from the battery and true tone issue, the ability to swap components from the iPhone 8 up to the iPhone SE is such a powerful like metric or such a powerful ability that you have. So I guess that kind of concludes all of my thoughts behind these different iPhones. They're all going to have their different pros and cons, but I'm going to be giving you guys my final thoughts on where I would start today if I were to start over. I have no experience fixing iPhones, what would I do? I guess to start off with, I would probably look towards iPhone 8s. The reason why I would look towards iPhone 8 is because iPhone 8 has the advantage of being compatible with the SE and you're also working on a very relatively cheap iPhone. Being able to work on the iPhone 8, I'm able to get more familiar with the internals and how it's laid out. Maybe I now know how or what connectors are leading to where and which <laughs> what does what on the motherboard. And I'm able to take that knowledge from the iPhone 8 and then bring it to the iPhone SE. And also, if I am deciding to go into my first repair on the iPhone 8, and let's say I do break something, or that I accidentally snipped the connector off of somewhere, and now I have a broken iPhone that doesn't boot anymore. Well, the benefit is that I can just throw out the motherboard or throw out any component that I break and use almost everything else from that iPhone 8 into an iPhone SE. Maybe later on I <laughs> decide to go on and buy an iPhone SE. I could take all the, those components from the broken iPhone 8 and then move it on onto the iPhone SE. And then from there I could either turn a profit or now I know what to do to not break that component. And from there I can repair that iPhone without an issue. And even if you do make mistakes, I still think mistakes are a really, really good way to learn. No one's going to be perfect. I have had my fair shares of breaking components back in the day, and I still do break components here and there, but at this point, I know how to try to avoid the critical components so I'm not out that much money, and I know what to do in case I do break a component, how to swap out different parts in order to repair the phone fully. So I hope you guys have all have a wonderful day, and I wish you guys luck with all your repairs.